Welcome back to Flying So Six channel. Today I am going to be doing an unboxing here of the Tenaris Adventures Ultimate Storage Boxes. This is specifically the returning backers um, version. So basically that means it's mostly just trays and it's not pre-filled. Um, if you are getting a version that, um, you know, not the returning backers, basically it'll, it'll already just be pre-filled in there, um, but still very similar. So, uh, and just to kind of explain, because I know it's going to be asked immediately as soon as this video starts. Yes, I'm going to be doing a guide. I'm starting off with this unboxing here to show all the contents of the storage boxes and then I'm going to go back through showing exactly how to fill each section. What are the cards that you need to remove from uh, your upgrade kit? What are the ones you're uh, you're adding in and anything else basically that you'll need to know to uh, basically upgrade from Tenaris Adventures to Tenaris Adventures Ultimate. All right, so these things are massive. And let me first say, when I received this, I mean, I've, you know, as part of, right, the process of developing, helping to develop this, and I've known how much the weight is, but when I received that box, which many people have already posted, and I won't be posting a, a, my own photo, but um, that box is so big, big, and these are so heavy, even though they are not filled, I really thought that they were, they were, they accidentally sent me the wrong version and I received the, the filled version, but that's not what actually happened. And instead, uh, we have the returning backer version. So, uh, and just to show here, the only difference between what you're going to see here in a second, and this is storage box one, um, is I have already basically just went through each of these were plastic wrapped so I've just taken off the wrapping so that way we can just get right into opening and don't have to wait for it um, but I guess even before I, I get to you know diving into this right is we can look at the different faces of the box so storage box one that is your primary box that's the box you're gonna take if you want to take this to somebody's house um, just to, you know, play Tenaris Adventures and you don't want to bring every single thing. So check out the artwork here, which will match up with uh, artwork on this box. Um, so this is the primary box, storage box one. Uh, so it won't have everything, right? You won't have every single uh, character. You won't have every single book, um, but that's not the point. You're not supposed to have every single um you know, variation there. The idea is to bring just what you need um, to, to play the game. And if you want to bring, you know, everything, then just bring, you know, both boxes. But that's uh, the, the general intent of this. All right, so raising this puppy off here, you can see the different sides of the boxes. And these are uh, big, big lids. And so you're seeing lots of the heroes there on each of the different sides. And then the front of the boxes here. So we have the scenario miniatures, save and slave slots, tiles, tokens, and accessories, the monster miniatures, the, uh, the books, board, map, and extra cards, and then the cards and uh, monster miniatures there um, so this is uh, the primary box here and then you see that there's this uh, section up here this is just basically to, to stop things from moving around um, you could either keep this in your box if you want or um, I, I was going to be you know playing around this uh, around with this as we're going but I'm pretty sure you can probably slide uh, another accessory in here. Um, but we'll talk about that uh, once we get there. All right, so I'm just going to move things off side because it does take up a lot of room in here. And I'm going to be showing off each individual um, box. So let's start here with the tiles, tokens, and tray. Uh, tiles, tokens, and accessories for storage box one. It also labels it on there. Um, so besides this video guide, there's also going to be a, um, 
a written guide that will explain the exact same thing. So if you don't feel like uh, watching the video, you just want the digital you know, version, that will be available really soon. We're basically kind of finishing that out. So here is this top tray here. Um, a lot of this will hold the different um, uh, terrain uh, tiles here. And you'll put that uh, in that. It's just basically this single sheet there. And then in this section here is going to hold a lot of your other uh, accessories, right? All your little tokens. Um, this is probably the, the bigger square pieces. You have a slot for uh, two D20s there um, and then uh, even more. So we'll get into that uh, once we get there. But this is the tiles uh, and tokens accessory tray there. Let's put this back on top like that and then uh, slide this puppy back in. So uh, I know my, uh, my buddy uh, Tiago who did a video uh, on this already because guess what? He even got his box before me. <laughs> um, so oh, good for him, that's, that's fine. Um, but uh, he did a video on this as well, showing off things. So hopefully I can kind of explain a little bit more than what's, uh, you know, what he did. But now we're gonna move to the scenario uh, miniatures and save slots. All right, so this one here is intended to hold, like you see on the top of the box, you got the farmer and the damsel, and then you have the, um, the three uh, prisoners, the two orbs, the three chests, and the three barrels. Wow, this thing's taking a little off uh, to come out the top. Um, this is the only thing in this tray. Now you'll notice that there is five slots here at the bottom. The idea of this is you are going to put, um, so whenever you play Tenaris uh, Adventures, you know, Ultimate, right? You're going to have like a hero. Um, and in fact, you're going to have four heroes. So you can put those heroes in here. You could probably put a few other little things because there is a fifth slot, right? Or fifth, fifth slot <laughs> um, right there. So you could probably put um, some other little pieces if you wanted as well. Uh, but the intention is to be able to put your, uh, your character miniature into these slots. Um, so that is the scenario miniatures and save slots. So you are ready to go. And then we'll pop these out here next. Next up is the monster miniatures. So all of the top of these have graphics to show you where the different miniatures go. Um, so I think most people probably can kind of figure out those ones. Of course, I'll still kind of go over and explain that um, as we go. But um, I think it's really more like people want to know about the extra slots and the cards and stuff like that, um, where that fits. But you can notice, uh, yep, quite a few trays, a lot of miniatures go in here. Um, in fact, now that I even look at this one, um, yeah, this one seems to be, oh, okay, I see. So it's the, the second uh, tray right here um, that you're gonna be able to put your pieces in. So this tray that was on top matches with this section here. So this, most of these, now I won't say exactly but most of these are uh, kind of like the um, Imperial box or legendary box miniatures. Now there is some of the Tenaris Adventures uh, miniatures and then even a couple of the Penumbra ones. It's really a mix. It's not like a straight you know, box for box or tray for tray uh, type of thing, but just to kind of show you. All right, and then we implemented this uh, pole system here because it can be really difficult to get uh, these trays out. Uh, and so we wanted to add a way for you to be able to do that. Now, it, just as a note, right, these are just kind of taped on, so they're not meant to take like a ton of weight. So just be careful when you're doing this, um, so that way you don't, you know, break these off, uh, because I think it'll be helpful if you want to, you know, take this tray in and out. And then, of course, you know, this section here matches um, with uh, this tray, the bottom tray. So we got the ogre. Um, we got a bunch of the Reapers, the Elementals, the Kemet Archers. So a lot of these from the Tenaris Adventures box. 
Um, let me see if there's actually any that wasn't from the Tenaris Adventures. But uh, yeah, there's some characters here that were for, from the Penumbral Pack full from Tenaris RPG. So you got a few in there, um, kind of mixed in, but uh, many of those are from uh, Tenaris Adventures. And then, of course, all of these trays here, right, come in with this ultimate Tenaris Adventures uh, tray lid. So it makes it uh, look real nice and uh, premium looking there. So there you go. Tray two, tray one of the monster miniatures. And then we're going to pop this puppy on top there. All right, let me make sure I'm not uh, messing these up here in a different order later. Um, now, I think you can kind of move them around if you want, uh, but personally, I'd probably try to keep them, you know, pretty close to what it was. So there's two different uh, trays here. This one's heavy because it's actually carrying a lot of the upgrade kit. So if you're a returning backer in the Tenaris uh, Adventures Ultimate campaign, there's stuff coming in here. So books, board, map, and extra cards. All right, right here, um, you should get the foreteller uh, code, and this will take you to their promotion. So that way you can use uh, Tenaris Adventures Ultimate with foreteller. And then, of course, we have a promo here for Odolin Sands of Destruction, which is uh, what's coming. And then um, we even threw in this little uh, hack and slash alternate mode there. This is basically a way to make Tenaris Adventures um, less puzzle-like and more just kind of throwing dice and... and um, you know, kind of having fun with it, I guess, with and, and a little more randomness than what uh, Tenaris Adventures brings. Now, this isn't, you know, I'd say the recommended way. It's just an alternative option uh, for people that weren't too happy with the way that um, the game was too deterministic of having, you know, villains that did a very specific thing. It wasn't, you know, surprise. It's just you had to figure out how to, you know, beat the puzzle, basically. Uh, so this adds some variability um, to your gameplay if you want to use that. All right. So we have the new rule book here, um, Tenaris Adventures rule book. So you'll notice specifically a couple ways to see that this is the new version. One is it mentions the standees here. Uh, the old version, there was no standees. So there's no, you know... Uh, standy mentioning there so that's a very quick dead giveaway that you have the new version versus the old so later on for people that are looking at this and trying to figure out what version they got um, there you go this is the Tenaris uh, Adventures Ultimate version and then basically includes a lot of the same content there is a lot of revisions in here I don't have necessarily enough time to go through and like point out every uh, single change, but we corrected things, we moved things, uh, a few things around. I think we added some more graphics or some more explanations, um, and uh, and so things have been moved around. Um, the commander role is here. We also have this section that describes uh, a little better some of the. Um, you know, campaign log, then the phase calendar, regions, uh, kind of the follow-up at the end. Um, of course, all these appendix uh, appendices existed before. You have all the puzzle answers there, other how to use the other expansions. There's the campaign perks. All of these were in the other game. It's just basically slightly different. And then we have the hack and slash uh, mode described here at the end. That's the, the last edition. Uh, that was added there. So that is the new rule book. This here is your campaign log. So in the original version, um, basically we gave people this. Um, now this is even a little bit different. So, you know, if you're looking at this right now, uh, the front page campaign perks, that's pretty much exactly the same, I think, as it was before. The phase calendar here, we added uh, sections here because there is certain quests where you're going to play um, a specific quest. 
Um, so there was some times where uh, if you happen to just miss maybe a certain piece of text or you messed up one of your adventures card, it, it was possible on accident to essentially miss a vital quest that's part of the story. Um, so now that's why that section is pre-filled. Um, we have the lists of quests there, which was, which was there ver here. Um, regions is still basically the same. War points is now different. This is, com this section's completely different. So there is three tiers, um, as you are going through adding warriors, strategists, diplomats, and spies, just like what exists, existed in Teneris, uh, adventures. Um, basically you're going to mark this and then when you get to each section, it will tell you like you get, you know, an iron and then, you know, on the triangle. And then when we get to the circle, now you get a tank or a bruiser hero and you add it to your character deck. Then you get to here, you get a heavy random armor, right? Then you get to here, you get a warrior's campaign perk. Then you go to here. This is the new part. You're getting, an, uh, you open up the Iron Hand Outpost envelope. So there's some cards specifically just for that. Um, and then you just kind of keep going on. You'll do that uh, possibly up to three times. So we've changed and rebalanced this because the war phase is a little different now. You're not using quest cards um, like you did before. There's not the mastery tracks that existed like there are before. Um, I think sometimes it kind of was a little confusing and what exactly it was you know, really providing people didn't know. Um, and then we have the fact log on this page here, which I think is mostly about the same. There might be a few corrections and then player notes. So this one, definitely a lot of revisions, um, but there is, you know, still a lot of the same kind of content in there. These, you're only getting one of these. So I'd suggest probably making a photocopy for yourself uh, to use in the campaign. So you don't use this one where we are making them available digitally as well. So you could always reprint another one, but just because it kind of comes on like this nicer, really, you know, nice print. Um, yeah, you, know, you could do that as an option. Uh, then the next part is the save sheet. So in Teneris uh, Adventures, we offered this as a digital um, item that you could add to basically mark down all of like your items, heroes you've unlocked, special heroes, legendary items, um, what adventures and NPCs and everything that you've done. Um, and then like the resources. Uh, but we didn't offer this in the box, but now it's part of the box. Uh, so you do have that available. Also, that will be available digitally as well. All right, next up here is a spot for a journal. Um, like I said, this is the primary box. Basically, the idea is you're gonna start with week one or two, of course, if you play the campaign. Um, but uh, as you go through here, so biggest change, right, of course, is this section here was in the journal. And then as you're going through the journal, you're moving um, around. This shows another adventure, which is possible uh, that you can do. And then uh, here we go. And then you go right to the quest, right? So instead of having a separate um, book, like the quest book to look in, now it's all in one book, uh, exactly like you wanted. Um, people have asked multiple times, is the writing of Teneris Adventures um, and Teneris Adventures Ultimate the same? No, it is not. It is different. Um, so if you are trying to use like the Foreteller for app, for example, it's not going to be uh, directly compatible. So I'd suggest that you would want to do the, uh, we are going to be providing the digital books for the returning backers. Um, so you will be able to get that and follow along if you want. Um, but uh, uh, it's, it's not the same. So you do kind of need to, to be able to um, use the, those digital books if you don't have this. All right, and then like I said, this uh, journal, whichever journal you're going to use, right? So if we're playing week one and two, we'll go here. If you were in, you know, three or four or five or six, you would replace this book, put it in the secondary box, and then put the one that you're going to use right here. So that way uh, it is available. All right, this is the next newest thing here. So many people did not want um, the uh, the poster map 
um, for Tenaris uh, Adventures, right? So now you get a game board. Uh, this was, you know, offered in Tenaris Ultimate. And you'll see here, here is the board laid out. This is the world phase side. You're going to put your character deck that you're going to gain over the story there. Then you pull the four hands of cards and then you're going to put them into your discard. You still put uh, cubes uh, on each of the areas as you um, basically take control of these. All the uh, instructions are still written on here on the board. Um, in fact, I think this is a revised version uh, from what was there before. So now that is there. And then on the other side, right, is our city phase map, which it previously, of course, was a, a poster map as well. This also, I believe, was revised. Um, and uh, now you um, can, can do it all here. I'm trying to remember, too, if we actually added an extra section here um, or not. Um, Maybe, maybe it was four. I'm trying to remember now. It's been a while since uh, I've, I even played like Tenera since like last year. So I'm um, trying to get back into it. But you put your character deck here. Same thing. Pull four hands. And then you're going to put your different building cards on these slots. And then as you level up, you'll uh, be able to spend. You spend these different symbols here. And then you'll put cubes basically for every time you're, you're putting a card down that uses that. And then you'll be able to use those to get different things. For example, let's say you put two cubes down here because I had six book or I had three book and six, uh, uh, three hands. I could um, spend those two cubes to get one wood. Um, or I can spend a cube to open two ranged weapons. Or I can spend a cube... Uh, and three wood plus two gold to upgrade um, my uh, building. And then the other thing is we added a rule because basically uh, some people could uh, do very well and be able to upgrade everything super fast um, and kind of threw off a little bit of the balance. So if upgrading to a level equal to the current week number plus two or higher, pay plus three loot cards any loot card uh, that you want. Basically, this kind of keeps it so that way you can't max out the buildings near like, you know, the first week or two of the game and then have super powerful abilities kind of going into each of the quests. Um, so it tries to, to balance the game a little bit better. All right, so that is the new board there. Now let's go to the next new game board. And this one's actually uh, sealed. So for many people, right, you are getting, um, with this add-on, you are getting two game boards. Um, in fact, some people didn't even realize that you were getting two game boards. Had to keep reminding people that this was a, a two-board <laughs> two add-on. Um, and so this was voted on by the community. So this is what, what you guys uh, wanted. And basically what these are is just cosmetic maps. Um, people have asked me multiple times, is this certain quests or anything? No, no, this is just um, just cosmetic maps that you can use for any quest. Um, one of the sides in here is an ocean map. There is some, uh, some quests that do actually happen like um, on like the undead boat that would happen. I think there's some other ones that are, you know, closer to like the water. There's a, um, there's like a water city that you're trying to save um, at one point in the adventure but this is mostly cosmetic uh, it's kind of cool you can kind of see like a some kind of monster or something be beneath the waves um, but otherwise just kind of a wave map there and of course all the standard um, sides that you have and then on the uh, uh, the health track there sorry about that and then on the other side is kind of like this wasteland, like lava area. Um, now, technically, I don't think this is like the official wasteland, but it could be, you know, for whatever you want it to be. Um, but you got like swords and shields. There's like a, a dead, like, you know, dinosaur or a dragon or something underneath there. 
um, and some other thing, other things and skulls. We always got to have skulls. If you've seen any of my videos before, I point that out a lot. That that uh, the a few of our guys in our company are like just absolutely obsessed with skulls. So, <laughs> um, all right. So anyway, this um, right here, right, is going to be the spot for um, your game board. Uh, but you could put any game board you want in there. So similar to like before, you'll notice though that this slot right here, there's like this etch slot. This is going to be for your skill pads. So you put your skill pads there. I'll show this in the video. Um, you know, like the official like guide video here, but that is where that one will go. Um, there's, uh, some card slots here. And then um, some mini Euro card slots uh, right there. And then you have a, a side here to be able to pull things out easily. All right, so that should be basically this box. Like I said, I come back, show uh, exactly where everything goes. But this gives you at least a quick idea of how this box works. All right, so let's put this over here. And now we'll go, oops, go to the cards and big monster miniatures box. All right, here we go. Tons of new stuff here. Um, so see see this here one is there's some cards hidden here so if you didn't see those before uh they're under this <laughs> um, but this is actually a divider that's uh used used on purpose here so hero pads will be able to go under there you can put like villain uh cards on this one and this one and so basically it'll sit like kind of like up like this i'll show uh, later on um but for people that have been wondering for a long time, what is the surprise that we've provided? Um, so, you know, right here, right, we have Sarah the Seer. I've done videos on the new Tenaris Ultimate Heroes, so this is not really a surprise for anyone that's been following my channel. If you didn't know, um, then, uh, you know, the, there you go. This is... Um, you know, one of the new characters that's coming, but hopefully you should already know that Sarah was going to be a hero in the game. Uh, she had a miniature in the previous um, boxes of the game, so it was in the penumbral pack, uh, but she wasn't actually used for anything. Um, but now she's got her own hero card, she's playable, um, and uh, be uh, awesome to have Sarah now as a PvP hero. Um, so she's got backside there. And then we have Zalir. I also mentioned this in my video. Basically, they're all specials. Um, so yes, theoretically, you could have a PvP that has uh, Hurudrin, the shaman, who is a, he's a special, but he has a lot of abilities that match with a healer. Um, and in fact, even the stats. So you could have two healers on a team. Um, so same thing with all the rest of these where they're specials, but then fit into a different role. So Susanna, here the Barbarian Lord, uh, match up two Brutes, two Shooters, Solnertha, the Commander, Urizard, the Spy Lord, who's a Tactician, Braumir, the Warrior Lord, who's a Tank, uh, Kimimi, the Mimic, who is a Tactician. And all right, so if you do not want to know what the secret is, um, then I would close your eyes uh, and ears now, but if you want to know, I'm going to reveal that to you. So uh, I'll wave like this. This is me telling you that I'm gonna reveal the secret. So uh, Bromelade the copycat um, from the campaign. You do know that she is a character that got a new NPC card. Or basically you can use her in the campaign as an NPC. So it's a non-playable character. She just kind of helps, you know, the other heroes. Well, they added a miniature for her, right? It's not, not secret. This was, this was known as part of the campaign. What wasn't known is the fact that we created a hero card for her 
Um, so she is a tactician and she's got some pretty crazy abilities. I'll probably do a follow-up PVP video talking about specifically this character. Um, but the backside is the true surprise. This is kind of like the, you know, uh, we'll add it in just for an extra cool thing to provide to backers. But this is the real uh, surprise here. Bromelade, the copycat, the balloons version <laughs> is what I've been calling it. Um, basically, this side is like a party edition um, of a hero pad. So for example, we have Cruel, uh, cruel Clocks, special, uh, range two, one enemy, special whenever a player looks at their cell phone and you notice, even if this attack is not used, his or her hero takes five damage. Zero damage on hit plus the effect. Check the time taking no damage. If the, first, uh, if the minute's first digit is even, the target takes five damage. If odd, the target heals five. If the second digit is even, an ally heals 10. If odd, an enemy takes 10 damage. So obviously this is kind of, you know, just a silly version of, um, you know, a, a hero because you're going to use like real life things in there. I'll do a full video talking about Bromelade more, but that is the special. So if you didn't know what the special surprise is, that is what it is. All right. So if you are just now coming back, we are finished talking about what the special um, is. I'll be putting that back here so you don't uh, know you can figure out for yourself if you would like all right so we have a slot here for the dragon we have um some changed uh cards here so i'll talk about this one so number 59 um i'd have to go and look because i don't remember specifically every single uh card but I think this one might have had a mistake on it previously. Um, so 59, uh, 60, 61, 62. Um, and I love that art. That art is just so cool. Uh, number 89, 90, uh, and 91, 92. Then you'll notice that there's the Penumbral Phoenix here. This is the card that allows you to use uh, the Phoenix specifically in the Tenaris um, Adventures um, campaign. So um, it explains here, Penumbral uh, Phoenix, commit hunt one, range one, one hero. Uh, it'll attack the closest target within range. Uh, for week, so week one and two, it's weaker. And then as it goes on, it gets stronger. So eight damage on hit plus a weakened token plus effect. Deal four damage to all their heroes and three of this villain miss eight. And then it goes up to 12 with two weakens, 16 to three, uh, three weakened tokens and doing more damage on the effect. Then it has a special uh, when placed deal 10 damage to all combatants in three. So this is kind of a, a unique thing that you will add uh, in your commit hunt to make the game even more difficult. You do not have to play this, play with this. This is uh, an optional component if you want. Um, and then you'll notice that there is the Hellfire Phoenix on the back side of this card. Uh, so this is a much even stronger version of that. Um, and this one you only use at Kemet Hunt um, 5. So uh, there's a, you know, one version. So at Kemet Hunt 1, you'll add, you can add this guy in. And then at 5, you can play with the Hellfire Phoenix, the much stronger version there. These ones are actually used in uh, the Wasteland Expedition uh, campaign. So these are all basically fights that have been reworked, right? So you had Kelroth that you could fight in the campaign. Um, but since we completely changed the rules, right, now they needed boss cards. So that's actually what these are for. So I'll, I'll correct that. But basically, um, that's, that's what these components are for is used in the Wasteland Expedition. All right. Next up, um, some more gold cards. We call them gold. I think, I don't know if that's really like the official standard name, but that's what we use. Um, so bosses, villains, level four, villains, level three, uh, level two, level one. So these are dividers that you're gonna be able to um, 
put here in your box so that way you can kind of uh, split up your cards uh, of the different villains and um, bosses. So that's what these are here. So it'll be a nice fitting thing for your box. I'm glad uh, we're able to provide, you know, this kind of way to make things a little more convenient and easy for you. All right, so even more stuff here. Um, all right, let's talk about these. Just gonna go into every single, uh, well, maybe not every single card, but give you the idea, at least. Um, all right, so one of the new things in Teneris Ultimate was people thought that um, some of the classes were too similar because you use the same skill pads. Well, basically what we came up with was a system for you to replace. And, and if you use the Time Twist book, you should already kind of be familiar with this. But basically you can replace your level three skill um, with a version that's specific to your hero. So for example, Katar's here, he has barbarian, uh, barbarism uh, where he can pay three hit points. Um, and a villain takes 20 damage. So basically it's just a massive hit there. Um, on the back side here is Cedric the Werewolf. Um, so ferocity, a villain in one of you takes 16 damage or 22 if you have 33, uh, 35 or fewer hit points. So this very much matches to how Cedric plays. Um, and as you kind of go on, you'll see that there's, you know, more and more of these same kind of things. Uh, Morlo the Minotaur, run to a villain, it takes 16 damage. Count Blake, a villain takes 10 damage, you heal 10. Uh, Herodis, uh, Gaknak, um, Zazena we have now in there. Those are the, the uh, Brutes. Garen has one. Um, Rokaru. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of these, but basically every single hero that's playable um, in the campaign, and you'll notice Suyoko, right? She's the ninja that can be a commander or a controller or a tactician. She has two sides as well. Um, you're going to be able to uh, use these different um, specials or sorry, skills as uh, an option for your level three. So make your character a, a little bit more unique because you're not just going to use the same standard one that all the brutes or all the shooters or everyone else, you know, has, right? Um, so, but they all kind of very much match the theme of that hero and specifically a lot of their specials. So like Katarina's the witch, uh, an ally swaps HP values with a villain if the HP difference doesn't exceed 12. Very much, um... Like, uh, I think it's Dark Ritual uh, that Katarina's special is uh, just like, except it's called Witchcraft in this one. And then, uh, and do take note, right? Some of these are villain turn and some of these are ally turn. So make sure to put them in the correct uh, section. The commanders here. Um, we have all of those, Skara, Solnertha, and all that. And then we do have... Um, some of these legendary items here, Ancestral Katana. Um, I think this one, so the, there was legendary items before, um, but I think these basically are like um, new versions because like this one didn't, there was nothing about like uh, if you were Rokaru or Suyoko um, and, and these like Spectral Weapon, uh, Kemet, Lifebreaker, I don't remember that one, but Ice Sword, these were, uh, um, what are they called, uh, artifacts from Arena the Contest. So basically we turn these into other items that you can use and they're all uh, legendary items you can now purchase and uh, use in the campaign. Now to get legendary, you have to have like the highest level building. Um, that is explained in the rules, but just kind of giving you an idea. But you know, you can get dragon armor now. Um, which existed in the Arena of the Contest campaign and now uh, is an item here. So basically, new items are coming in your game that didn't uh, exist before. So that's what all of these are. So just throw all these puppies um, into your game. They're all new additions. Uh, 
and uh, should hopefully add some fun new things. Um, if you either haven't played or you want to play, uh, you now have that as an option. Basically, these are just more dividers, right? So PvP and loot. Um, so other dividers that you can use. And we'll go through all of those later. All right, characters. There is now level eight weapon shop. Um, basically, these are uh, higher level car, uh, comrade cards. In the um, original game, it went up to seven. Um, and when I say original, I mean Tenaris Adventures, it went up to seven. And so now you got level eight uh, abilities there. Um, and actually maybe, maybe, yeah, we're just adding in. So weapon shop seven. Yeah. So a little bit extra there, seven, eight. So you're getting some new buildings there and you can see it even adds in there about legendary. So uh, it's a little more clear that you're using, uh, you can get legendaries. <coughs> so new building, uh, new buildings and commander cards. You can just, um, add those into your deck. Um, this is a corrected card, um, so go find this guy. He already existed before. Uh, go and replace this one. Um, this is a new character. Uh, this was one that the community helped develop. Uh, Hirokaru, uh, Dragon Clan Monk. This is a crossover with uh, Hirokiri. Uh, I'm probably messing up the name there. Um, but anyway, that is a new NPC character. Oh man, who's this guy? Huh, that looks really familiar for some reason. Uh, well, anyway, he's a new character, so make sure to add him to your deck. Dragon Avatar, uh, also, I believe, a new, char uh, new NPC character that didn't exist before. Teriel, the Elf Ranger, also another new NPC character. Um... Uh, Sylphia, Silverblade, the Storm Pirate. This one, I think I'm going to have to double check. I don't think she existed before, but I could be wrong. I think she might be a corrected. Um, uh, so earlier I had mentioned that this one I thought was a replacement card. That's uh, inaccurate. Actually, this is a brand new card. So make sure to add that one to your deck. Uh, character. Um, same thing, the, let's see, Ballas, the Kemet Trader. I think this is a new one. Um, Mava, the Extra Planar Captain, that's a new one. Silver Dragon Manifestation, that is a new one. Becca, the Druid of the Inter uh, Eternal Circle, that is a new one. Queen of the Mystical Kingdom, that is also a new card. Uh, Kojin Khan, uh, that is a, another new card. Bromelay, the Copycat. This one, um, she has another card. I will double check because I'm not exactly sure if you're supposed to remove her other card or you just um, keep this one. But anyway, there's uh, Bromelade. That's the new one um, that was offered here in the campaign as well. And then we have all the hero, uh, hero cards for all the new Teneris Ultimate Heroes that you can add to your hero card deck. Uh, including this one right here. So um, people that aren't sure. Uh, so Talessa comes in the Dragon Collection. So if you own the Dragon Collection um, box, you will have the miniature and you'll have the attack cards. If you don't own the Dragon Collection box, you'll just get this. So this won't be enough for you to play. But basically... Um, the, you know, we don't, we don't want to invalidate everyone that paid money to, you know, get that box. Right. But we want to be able to enable people that did purchase it to be able to use this character just, you know, outside of just PVP. So now she is playable in the campaign as a hero. Um, and, uh, that's Talessa there. I talked to her, uh, talked about her in the, um, book and, uh, or in my previous video. And so that's, uh, that's one, that's one. All right. I hit start of the campaign. So you'll notice here, uh, for people that were familiar before, uh, this is kind of like your, uh, adventure cards. 
And they're basically still like the adventure cards, but they're different now. Um, so now they have uh, some more story text here on like the backside of the cards instead of like going to um, different section like in the book. Um, and there's more things about, you know, discussions that happens with like these characters. The idea with this though is you are going to replace your adventure cards with these cards. So if you have the old uh, adventure cards, they're all ones that have letters, um, you can replace all of these cards um, with these ones. Now, let me just say, there's Telesa one, Herdrin, Priority, yep, okay. Um, so yeah, this, and it has some more information too, maybe about like some facts or that you have to play like a certain card. So it's a little more specific to like each one now, but that's the idea. You're going to place those there and then, and you have the relics. Um, then we get a dark light card here. Um, I believe this one is basically a replacement for um, one of the car, uh, the, obviously a Zafara card, right? Um, so you would replace this one to use um, in uh, the campaign. So this is basically a Tenaris Adventures card. You wouldn't use this for PvP, but you just use this for PvE. Uh, key notification that you know that you have the right version now is it says things like gain one cube at the bottom if you miss. That was a rule that often many people forgot, uh, but now it's written right there. So that is a replacement card for sure. All right. So we got a couple things here. We have the envelopes and we have this deck of cards that has uh, Asmore, uh, the Red Dragon, and then a commander card on the back. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Asmore card is basically so you can use, um, you know, this in Wasteland Expedition. So now you have uh, boss cards for him through this. Same thing with um, Thyra, Lightning Dragon, then the Undead Dragon, Zaramog, Kelroth. And then uh, bow off there um, that you can all use these cards. Then we have the silver dragon. These are brand new cards. Uh, there's double sided. So basically one is the, the normal one that you'll use at the beginning. When you wound him, then you'll go to the backside and then he's like maimed basically. And you can do more damage and he's not as strong. Um, okay. So that's the silver. Um, then we have... Uh, some other cards here, so Master Brute, Legendary Brute, uh, Master Tactician, Legendary Tactician, um, at level two, level three. Um, so these are some other cards. This attack requires no copy or copy one of the hero's primary uh, attacks. Make that attack in addition to this card's benefit. It requires a roll and uh, it is ignored this cycle. So <clears throat> these cards here, are your cards to replace. So, okay, let me start over. Um, in the original version of the game, right, your heroes will start with two role specific cards and then two hero unique cards. Um, as you go on in the campaign, your hero will start getting stronger. They'll get stronger uh, level up cards. They will go to level, uh, I believe level one, then level two, then level three. You'll get like a mix of cards. So you'll have, I think, I think it's like one level three and then like two level twos and then like a one. Um, I could be wrong on like the numbers there, but basically what happens is over time, your hero cards are not unique anymore um, because they don't, just don't balance um, eventually later in the game. So to help uh, compensate for that so you can still continue to use your your heroes special abilities now we've provided new roll cards that allow you to use an ability uh, that's unique to your hero so for example legendary brute this is a, a level three card 
An enemy in one of you takes 12 damage, then make a copy of one of this hero's original primary attacks. So you get 12 damage on top of what your original primary card says. And so you get to add that damage plus the effects from that card. So this will help balance out um, the game. So you can still use these, you know, those extra cards don't count as anything. This is just, you know, the one that you'll use as part of your deck. So by the end, you'll still have roll cards, but you get to use the, uh, the hit damage and the effects um, of, the, um, of that card. And like it says in here, you don't need to do another uh, roll or anything like that. This is just in addition um, to that. So I think this is probably one of the things many people were really excited for just because uh, that was kind of a downside, uh, unintended downside of the original game that you could have that happen. So, all right, so let me put these cards back. Basically, all of those are brand new cards add those uh, in to your deck as another option. You don't have to use those if you don't want, you'll still have the option just like you always do, um, but now you have the option to use your hero specific cards. All right, let's get to these cards. Others, five, four, three, all right, maybe it's on this side. Ah, okay, more dividers, basically. So now you got dividers for heroes attacks. You got heroes, uh, you know, tacticians, blah, 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 everything in there. Um, NPCs, structures, you have the different structures. So this will help. Basically, you put these little dividers in with your cards. Um, and I believe basically like this section is all poker size. Then this is all po poker size. And it should fit all sleeves, uh, sleeve size. So... Um, these dividers there will be very helpful. I'm just gonna pop these puppies in here. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. I think there's one other thing in here and that is um, this here. And I really don't want to reveal too much of it, but basically this, uh, this is the sections here, right? So you have Envelope of Secrets, Warriors Tier 3. Um, so you're gonna be able to pull this card and see what the secret thing is. So there may be uh, there may be some puzzles, there may be something special like quest thing. Um, there's all kinds of different stuff, but basically they're all gonna be here. So pull from this deck, but keep them all in the envelope so they don't get um, lost in with the other cards because they're supposed to be unlocked as you go. Um, now, nothing's destructible. Um, so you can always reuse these, just put them back in there so that way it's at least, you know, secret. All right, I did forget one section here, but basically what this is, uh, one, one deck of cards, but nothing's really you know missing too much from here, but it's pretty much all just the attack cards for all the new Tenaris Ultimate Heroes. Um, so basically that's it. Like I said, um, you know that these are you know new because they have the, well, one, these are new characters, but two is because they have that mana cube. That's how you know they'll be used um, specifically in Tenaris Ultimate. Um, so all of these ones are just the new characters here. Another note um, is that uh, attack cards are actually not used in PvP anymore. So they're only used in PvE. Um, so that's just so you guys are, are clear. That's how these cards, why they, they say um, with a mana cube, because they're only used for PV, uh, PvE now. So the, the campaign cooperative campaign part. Um, and then another thing to note, right, is you're only going to get the cards for Bromelade um, for, you know, PvE, right? Because PvP version doesn't actually use attack cards. So that's, you know, other version of her that I mentioned earlier. Um, there is no cards there because you're just going to use the hero pad. But anyway, that is the last deck of cards from Storage Box 1. All right, so I'm going to leave these guys out here, um, but that is, whew, took a while, but we got through storage box one. All right, we'll be back here in a second for storage box two. Let's launch into storage box two, and um, we'll go here at it. All right, so this box here, 
<clears throat> contains the cinematic scenario miniatures, hero miniatures, walls and extra miniatures, and then the books and extra cards. So even more area for all those books and cards. Look in here at the first box of storage box two, cosmetic scenario miniatures. Basically, this is, um, I believe everything that's in here is from the scenario pack box. Um, so all of the contents that belongs in there. Now I think there, now that I think about it, there is, yeah, this like under tray that contains a, a couple other items. So I'll get into showing that here soon. Um, but basically this is, um, you know, mostly containing the scenario pack with a couple other things. Like, uh, for example, I know these right here are switches, um, and those existed in the legendary box. Um, I think this here might be, um, well, I, I, I'll go into it once we get there, but basically this is the tray. It's just, you know, these two pieces here and it is, uh, ready to be filled, which I am uh, definitely going to be excited to combine all of this down. So that's it complete uh cosmetic scenario miniature box one um pretty easy all right going next into storage box uh two hero miniatures this is probably actually one of the easier ones um, because it's pretty easily labeled where um, all the heroes go and because the heroes have their own colors to them you can very easily tell, right? These are all the controllers, this is the shooters, the healers, commanders, bruisers, uh, or sorry, brutes, bruisers, tacticians, and then a bunch of the specials, then tanks, and uh, a couple of the other specials there uh, sit in the center. So pretty easily you can kind of tell where these go um, because this is the returning, uh, bo uh, returning backers box here. Um, we have our... Uh, new heroes here and whoop looks like uh, Br uh oh no no he, he's good he's good I for a second I thought his arm was missing but his arm is actually uh kind of into his cape here so here is brown mirror the warrior lord um hopefully you guys can see him there uh but that is the new Kemet lord all right and I'm probably going to reference this just to make sure. Yeah, we got everything here. But then Solnertha, the Necromancer Lord right there. So hopefully you can uh, see her here. Um, but this is her. So pretty simple. Um, I mean, she does have some detail on her cloak and uh, on her staff and like holding like a flame. Seems to be a lot of characters that hold flames. Um, this here will be where the old uh, Haran will sit uh, because there is actually two versions of him. One is a tactician and one is a special. Here is the Zena, uh, the barbarian lord. You can tell because he has that giant sword that he is carrying around with him. Um, and he's got lots of skulls um, all over him because, you know, we love skulls. So uh, there you go. That is Zazena. And he just pops right back there. Right here we have um, Killed Rolly. He is the Archer Lord. Um, so he's got that bow. You can see he has like a quiver at his side. He actually looks a little bit older in, you know, this, uh, this miniature than, uh, than I kind of thought he would. And he's got two quivers of arrows because, you know, he's an archer lord, right? He's got to carry a lot of uh, arrows there. And now that I think about it, yeah, that, three quivers. Wow. You need a lot of arrows. <laughs> All right. Then we have... Um, Yurizard, the, uh, spy lord with her, like, little, like, ghost minion. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. I don't know if there actually is any lore, um, with, like, this, like, demon miniature thing that kind of, like, follows her around. Um, I mean, not that I'm aware of. I feel like they, they made this to match the art, which had this, but it didn't, um, I don't know if there was like a story that they were going to go with this and then they didn't end up doing that. But um, anyway, that is uh, Yurizard 
and you can just pop out this whole tray here. All of these have their own uh, lids, so that way you don't have to worry about these falling out later. And then these also have the sides just like what we saw in the earlier box. Um, so that was all five Kemet Lords, so the new Kemet Lords. And then now here's the tray for the other heroes. That will go in there as we fill them up. And then we can easily put this back in. Put this puppy back in, put the lid back on, and that's it. Hero Miniatures tray done. All right. The walls and extra miniatures. This is mostly uh, legendary box components, um, but there actually is some other stuff in here. So you see here in a second, and they actually got thrown out. Um, which I've seen a few people have already. If you get any damages, definitely let us um, know. But basically, you should be getting you should be getting uh, two of these uh, winged guys here. Um, they are used in the uh, Silver Dragon fight, and then you should be getting two spectral uh, ninja characters here, which go in that slot and that slot. And then here is uh, the uh, Bromelade uh, miniature. She is, you know, so she's used in the campaign as an NPC, but she is also a hero. So she, just as a note, she's like the only hero that is not in the hero tray box. So if you're looking for her later, um, this is where she's sitting in, in the walls and extras miniatures uh, slot. So here we're going to put uh, different layers of the walls um, and then walls uh, that will go along this section um, here and then more walls here. So there's uh, multiple sizes. Next we have the Demon Balroth here, the Hydra right in this spot, and then the Penumbral, um, the Penumbral Dragon will go in this slot. Uh, so remember, last one here. Whoo boy, this is a heavy boy. And um, hopefully I'm not damaging the, my box here by putting it here. But this is heavy because it contains all the last of the books, books and extra cards. So these are already sealed up, which is actually different than um, what the other one was. And this is pretty much it. So you're going to put all your other books and you'll see that there is three um, separate books here. And then there's some extra card slots uh, here that you're going to be able to put some cards. Um, I'll have, you know, the tutorial here that will show, you know, what exactly goes where. But I will say that there's some that are just extra spots. So it's kind of wherever, you know, like basically you need um, the, the idea of the box is being kind of like flexible. So that way, you know, if you want to have... For example, you could put your character deck um, <clears throat> of cards uh, here if you wanted to. Now, you know, if you're not, if you're bringing it for the the main core box for every campaign, you probably wouldn't want to do that because then you wouldn't have the um, the pieces. But anyway, there's uh, so some piece of paper and cardboard to separate these so these books don't get smashed up. Basically, here is the week three here. So tons of that great artwork again. We actually did modify this book some too. Um, so like I know, for example, like these dragon collection quests uh, did change and get improved. Um, we even added some different art in there into the books, which I think was mentioned in the Teneris Ultimate campaign. So there's more, there's even more art in this thing. Um, I say this, I mean, this book is just freaking, these are just loaded up with content. Um, and then probably the most important thing is a lot of the books. So in the original Teneris adventures, you would go to the city phase um, and you complete like the, the world phase event, um, which you still do. But now you can read the back of this book. So, for example, it says, you know, week four, read uh, this after ending week four world phase, and then you go and read this section. So it's pretty much similar content. The wording is different. Um, and then there's puzzle solutions, but now it is um, all in like these, the one books, right? So you're not having to do uh, a lot of different books. So then week five and six, 
also um, revised. Now, I don't know if there's quite as uh, uh, extensive revisions as there was in some of the earlier ones, just because um, the earlier versions or the, the earlier quests, I think, had a few more issues um, based on the feedback that was provided. There's also the interlude quests that are in here um, that, you know, basically are those quests where you get to play as the Kemet um, instead of just playing as the heroes. Uh, so that is also, uh, you know, a change in the books here. And then you got your end game fights um, there. And um, pretty much, yeah, you'll kind of be closing it out. The end last book here is the extras book. Um, this is also the one that's like in the Tenaris uh, standee extra book. Basically what this is, is this is the, um, the Wasteland Expedition campaign. Um, in fact, it's basically all just like described here. So you can see in the taste, uh, table of contents, Wasteland Expedition, and you can see all the quests and everything that can be played. And then there is the In the Realms of Madness, which is the epilogue campaign as part of, uh, that was part of Tenaris Adventures. And then there's uh, these one shots such as the Elder Dragon quest and the Silver Dragon. And then there's like a wave fighter event, which probably many people don't even know. Um, but and, and here's a campaign campaign sheet that you can use when you're doing a Wasteland Expedition and then in the Realms of Madness uh, and then the items that you get for uh, those ones. But um, anyway, that's all in here. So there's like a wave um, quest. Where basically you set up and you're fighting waves of bad guys and trying to survive as long as you can. Many people don't even know that exists, but that's like a one-shot thing that you can do. Um, and then here is the Silver Dragon. We have the Elder Dragon quest. All of these, uh, you know, re redone. These are one-shot quests. There's no campaign element to them. Now, of course, you know, as usual with all of the games, you can do any of the quests one shot. There's rules in the rule book to do that. Um, but this specifically, uh, you know, if, if you play them like normal, it's assuming you're doing the campaign. So you need to look at the rule book to play them individually. But the ones that are in the back of this book, you can just play one shot because they're not actually tied. Um, to this. So uh, thing to notice here about um, like these quests. So in Arena the Contest you had campaign cards and you followed the campaign cards. Well we've updated that to work in the same way that uh, Tenaris Adventures worked. So now it follows this, uh, this journal structure like we had in Tenaris Adventures. So no more campaign uh, cards. If you want to keep your campaign cards, you can. Um, if you don't, you think you'll never play the original version anymore, then yeah, I guess you can chuck them. Somebody asked me recently about that. Um, no issue there, but uh, it's just kind of up to you. I probably will keep my original version of Arena of the Contest components, uh, but that's you know personally just me. So whatever fits best for you. And by the way, um, I guess I didn't say this earlier. But what I've seen in the past with the, the game box is if you alternate stacking these like this, um, it fits flatter uh, in the storage. So if you alternate the spirals, it's going to sit a little bit better. You could put these back if you want, um, but you really don't need to. Okay, and that's it. So that is the end of uh, the storage box there. Let's, let's put this back in before we kind of close out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, long video series where I talked. I mean, most of the upgrade content was discussed in Storage Box 1. There's only just a couple new things that are in Storage Box 2. This thing gets filled up all the way to the top, so there's no real um, extra room there. And uh, pretty much at this point, we are at the end. So uh, the next video you guys will see will be the storage guide where I will go through and try to show you in the best way that um, I can possibly try to do to uh, show you where things go in the boxes. 
Um, and then of course there will be a written guide as well. So you don't have to watch the videos if you don't want to. Um, but uh, anyway, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you at the next one.